it's really worth stuffing this in your face so you get rid of this trying to desperately playing some hands you're not supposed to play. Let's crush. So I want to share one very valuable mindset tip that has helped me a lot. And I'm a very practical guy, right? I'm not just going to be sit here. Just be happy and be okay with yourself. You're going to make money. No, this is dumb shit, of course. And I have developed very practical tips that help me to stay calm, to stay rational, make good decisions. And I used to play semi-professional football when I was a kid, when I was young. So, of course, I've always had a connection with traditional sports, especially football. But these concepts can be taken away from tennis, football, basketball, whatever it is. So here I want to share how thinking in terms of offense versus defense will really help you to get rid of some really bad beliefs and habits that you have in your game that will cause you tilting, punting, making dumb calls and leveling yourself and just simply dumb shit and losing a lot of money. And of course, we want to do that with a hand example. So here, pocket aces. Oh, pocket aces. Yeah. Um, it's not about pocket aces. It's about more about the, the general approach, the, the mindset that we want to adopt for these spots, also from Charles Darwin's per perspective. So we bet, we face a race, and I just want to show you how a solver, how understanding the numbers, the money we make when we are the aggressor, the better, the raiser, versus being the caller, the defender. And you need to understand where the money comes from in poker, how it what it means to improve your win rate, all right? So it's not really just about this hand. I just want to have something visual and we're going to be using here um, Pyro Solver and I try to keep it sharp, short, so that you have some very good takeaways here. So for the preflop range, I'm taking um, a usual 40 big blind range and this was in the middle of a tournament, like 50% left, a small field, it was a high stakes tournament. So I use here um, the... ICM ranges we have impaired. If you don't know what this is about, they're way more accurate. There's plenty of other YouTube videos over the last couple of weeks that we have uploaded on our channel. Just check it out. So it's a small field tournament with 50%, that's like 60, 40%, but it's a very good reflection, way more accurate than chippy ranges. So let's have a look here. Hijack, we're raising. We can take the chippy V ranges, but of course, ICM ranges are a little bit more accurate considering the payout structure, even though it's further away from the money. ICM applies more than you think. And then for big blind opening, uh, hijack race uh, versus chip EV, he was supposed to defend that wide, but if we consider ICM, it's much tighter. So these are the ranges I'm considering here. And let's go into the, um, the flood spot. And this is really trivial, but it is worth to really focus on, on this kind of stuff. The, the, literally the simple things, doing them correct over and over again in a consistent way and not fucking up will make you a great poker player and will make you the most money. It's not the fancy shit. This is what you need to understand. All right, let's minimize my shit face a little bit so you can see all the numbers. All right, here we go. So you see, as for us, as the prefab aggressor, and this is a very important concept, is we have an equity advantage, right? Because we have ace-king, we have aces, we have kings, an opponent, our opponent does not have it. He is in defending position. So we are in a position now to make money. We're going to have, on average, a stronger hand. So we want to make sure we get money in. And 57% with your overall range versus 43% is actually quite significant. It can even go up to 60, 65% in some very extreme spots when we have a very tight range on the Broadway board versus a big blind range and so on and so forth. So for the out of position player here, you need to understand that the moment you're calling versus three bets, you're calling versus open raises, you are in a disadvantaged position. Why do we put ourselves in a disadvantaged position? I'm asking yourself that. And if you cannot answer the question, you need to understand that. And I will, of course, share that with you. But most players don't understand that. All right. So do you have the answer? Why do we put ourselves voluntarily in that disadvantaged position? Well, because of the odds, because we paid the big blind. So it's worth for us, even though we only have 30, 40%, to take a look and see if we hit something decent. That's basically the, the main approach when it comes to defending, because we invested money, we open raised, now we call versus a three bet. So it means we're always going to have an equity, or let's say very often equity disadvantage on most boards, unless it's some extreme boards that favor us heavily, right? Where we even start donking. But I don't want to talk about some, some exceptional situations. I really just want to talk about the main, the, the, 
the, the most likely scenario that will occur. So, and you see that here, when you sit here with, let's say, um, six, five or seven, five, right? You're like, you're slight underdog or you're slight favor, but it's um, just very little. It's not that you make a lot of money. And what most players do wrong is they think, okay, how do I play here my range and my hand? So uh, I need to make a lot of money. No, just you're in a defensive position. Your goal is a solid defense, all right? My mind, with a moment, I'm switching between offense, raising, betting, three betting. Of course, I, on average, do that, you, or you're supposed to do that, with a very strong hand. So that's where you attack, that's where you wanna gain a lot of value, a lot of EV from your hands. Versus then, being the defender is, I immediately shift back from attack, making a lot of money, to defending, trying to play it clean, simple, solid defense, and waiting for the moment where I can counter attack, where I hit a good hand, and I switch back to the offense, which also occurs in football, tennis, right? We're in the defense and we make a counter attack because the situation allows us to do that, but in a smart way, right? So this is then the smart way when we hit a big hand because we defend it and now we can counter attack. And let's say we have a king queen here or we have a king four or we have a two pair set or a very strong draw, right? Or the opportunity to run a profitable bluff. A lot of the hands here, um, let's say you have a queen four, right? Or you have an ace deuce. And a lot of the times you have a lot of these marginal holdings here. Um, you have very little EV, let's say an ace deuce, 11 for a gut shot. That's, that's not a lot. Of course, we're gonna continue playing it, but since we're gonna have so many jack fives and 10 fours and it's just that we're not going to generate a lot of profit. A lot of our hands are just bluff catchers, even with the king X, if we face multiple barrels. When you're in the offense, if you have a strong hand, that's basically here uh, five big blinds, right? If we divide it by 10, 40 big blinds or 38 big blinds behind in a five point, roughly six, five to six big blind pot. We make here five big blinds, six big blinds, four or five. On average, we, we're gonna generate 10 big blinds. That's a huge, huge win rate. Here, all with these margin holdings, 1.3 big blinds, one big blind. You see a huge gap here between the moment we hit a strong hand and we wanna switch to offense versus defense. And the reason I'm repeating it is, it's really worth stuffing this in your face so you get rid of this trying to desperately playing some hands you're not supposed to play. That is very important when it comes to defending. And the way I've also trained myself, that's incorporated that into my meditations or write down it as a session goal and I reminded myself. So I literally hammered that into my mind because I'm still guilty of that as well. It still happens to me that I'm playing hands in a in the defense position that I'm not supposed to play. Too aggressive, too much thinking of, God, I need to be balanced. I need to defend more hands. No, you're fucked anyway. You're not supposed to overplay certain hands and just play it clean and solid. Like solid is so important when it comes to defending. I mean, we can take it further. Let's say we bet, villain calls, turn is a nine, we check. And we see the in-position player still has an EV and equity advantage. Since he bets also so much air and the out-of-position folds out so much air, but once again, where does the EV come from? Where does the money come from? We see it here with aces, we generate 12 big blinds on average, king, queen, 10 big blinds, 11 big blinds, uh, versus the out-of-position player, who's now even with hands like if you compare the strongest hands that in position has, sets two pairs, a lot of these hands out of position would raise, versus the strongest hands that out of position has, you will see that even here, like his best hands he has in the calling range only make five to six big blinds, unless he now hit a miracle two pair or pocket nines, right? But apart from that, like most of his hands just reach those five to six big blinds versus 10 to 11 big blinds from the in position player. I'm excluding some of these in extremely strong hands here now, like pocket nines, right? If you get very lucky again, this is a very exceptional mo uh, situation. I wanna talk about the, the most likely scenario, the most likely hands we're playing with and also the hands we struggle with, right? So then we call and I wanna take it to the river because the river is gonna be very, very important. Let's say there's the, the 10, um, we check and now in position 
um, bets again here two third three quarter pots around on that sizing you see now <clears throat> With a hand like with when you have a bluff catcher, king deuce, king three, king eight, you make two to five big bluff. If, if of course, also um, the the in position player is having uh, enough bluffs, right? You see, he's going absolutely mental. He's shoving all these because the ten is such a good card, right? He's shoving a six, ace deuce. If we reduce that uh, with a frequency just by fifty percent, and people are not basically shoving every single non showdown value hand, right? There's not a single hand that in position is giving up. Most players are not so good to recognize that. Even, even A7 and diamonds you're supposed to jam here, which I intuitively would have given up. But just the 10 is so good for the in position player because he has more queen jacks, he has queen tens. Now a lot of 10x that were bluffing gonna check and that means you can continue bluffing very aggressively. This is what most players don't understand. And even against that, it's not that you're yippee kaye with your king eight. If you have a bluff catcher with a queen 10, you make one big blind, right? King eight, you make two big blinds in a, in a 40 big blind pot. This is not a lot. And this is the moment when the in position player removes a few bluffs, it's a minus EV call. But bottom line is here with a majority of strong calling hands on the river that are bluff catchers, you're barely making any profit, assuming that your opponent is bluffing very aggressively. So against population, you're actually losing money. So it's way more important to be hero falling in these spots. Save your tournament life if we also consider ICM. But if you're, of course, in that mindset of, I always need to make moves and play hands and like I need to defend and you have problems with your ego and you're not able to switch from offense to defense in those crucial situations... I don't, I know, like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm fucked. Also on this river, the same, like this river is just very, very bad for us because we don't really have queen jacks and we still sit on a lot of bluff catchers. We're not going to have king five, king four, king nine, pocket nines, ace king, kings, which in position has all of them. So we are fucked and we need to accept that at certain boards, certain runners are just not good for us. And we simply overfall, right? We fought here already 50% uh, of the time, which is quite a lot, but just such a bad river. So I, I hope this really opens your eyes. I know it sounds simple, but the, the point is in order to make money in poker or in everything in these days, it's not about some fancy shit. It's just doing the simple things that sounds so easy. And I know some of you are going to be in the comments. Oh, yeah. Are you invent you? Oh, yeah. Crazy Ben. Oh, yeah. You invented the wheel. Yeah. I'm not inventing the wheel and I've never done that. I'm just doing the shit that works simple things but they're hard to execute because they're so boring and then once you do that once you master the basics you can start looking for some extra edge and start working on spots that nobody has working on like we did with the icm ranges for early games and, and uh, mid games and tournaments for different uh, stages of the tournament maybe dive deeper into g2 poker learn pkos or whatever it is right but as long as you don't master the fundamentals you should not spread your attention too much. So I really hope this opens your eyes and maybe will stop you doing some unnecessary puns, wait for good spots, and that's how you crush in poker.